Day seven of Denver Broncos OTA saw Zach Wilson run with the first team offense, and it didn't exactly go very well. I want to bring in this tweet from Ryan Edwards, who was present at practice today. Final practice, we get to see of Broncos OTAs. Overall, not a banner day for the offense, but here are some thoughts on the quarterbacks. Zach Wilson ran with the ones and struggled. Whether it was 7-on-7 seven seven or team, he didn't really find much of a rhythm, highlighted by an interception to P.J. Locke off his back foot when Jaquan McMillan came on a blitz. He had a nice completion of Marvin Mims on a comeback route throwing into the wind, but was otherwise pretty rough. That is not a glaring endorsement at all of Zach Wilson. This was the media's first opportunity to see him run with the first team offense. Previously, they had exclusively seen him run with the threes, and even running with the threes, Zach Wilson really, really struggled. So... Zach Wilson, we're hoping, will be able to showcase some level of growth from his time with the New York Jets, where he showed really erratic play or very, very, very conservative play that just couldn't move the ball down the field. It was one or the other, and thus far in Denver, we've seen a lot more of the erratic Zach Wilson in practice as compared to the conservative Zach Wilson, which is much more of what Sean Payton wants. I don't know what's happened with Zach Wilson and his other opportunities running with the ones, but what the media got to see today, it was not great. Jarrett Stidham led the twos and once again was the most consistent of the three. Nothing flashy, took underneath routes and kept the ball out of trouble. Basically looked like Teddy Bridgewater out there, was safe, conservative, took what the defense gave him. Again, nothing flashy, nothing, no big plays really from Jarrett Stidham. Bo Nix was with the third team offense and had some good moments, especially in the red zone during Skeleton where he was very sharp. The team period showed some struggles. Part of it was certainly the third team offensive line and receivers. The timing just wasn't consistent and he looked less settled in the pocket today. He was clearly at its best when he, he or he's clearly at his best when he knows where he wants to go with the ball before it snaps. So Will or um Bo Nix, sorry, needs some time to develop his post-snap reads, see what the defense is doing, if they rotate coverage, all that good stuff, because you can't always pre predetermine where you're going to throw the ball. That can lead to some really bad interceptions. You have to see what the defense is doing both pre- and post-snap, and Bo Nix to this point has displayed a high ability to do a whole lot of things from changing plays at the line of scrimmage. That was something that Cecil Lamy revealed. He might have gotten in trouble for revealing that, but he revealed it on Orange and Blue today. He's also um, he's also setting protections. He's just doing a whole lot of little things very, very well. And Zach Wilson, to this point, hasn't really done that. Jarrett Stidham, you would expect to do that. That was the biggest calling card of Jarrett Stidham when he was brought when he was brought in here was that he was able to do the pre and po pre and post snap processing really really well but to this point I still feel like Bo Nix will be the Denver Broncos week one starter but it's going to take time and there are going to be these peaks and valleys in the development but I still believe that Bo Nix is on a very very strong course as far as players who did not participate today, working on the side field or watching from the sidelines during teamwork, Caden Stearns coming back from his patella, Brandon Jones, that's a new one. We don't know what's going on with him. Greg Dulcich, Pat Sertan had a minor leg tweak, so he's just being held out for precautionary purposes. Sutton's still not there, and then Levi Wallace was not there as well. That's also a new one, and we didn't really get a whole lot of information as to what's going on with Levi. So we'll see if this isn't um, anything to be concerned about or if it's something we should be concerned about. That's going to take some time to reveal itself there. You know, Sean Payton doesn't really reveal a lot when it comes to injuries. As far as other players who had a good day today, Nick Benito was consistently in the backfield making plays according to several reports from both Zach Stevens and Romy Bean. He looked really, really good today. So there are your highlights from the final open day to media 
for Denver Broncos OTAs. The next time that the media will be out there is June 11th through June 13th, all three days of mandatory minicamp. And Sean Payton said he does expect Cortland Sutton to show up for mandatory minicamp. We will address that in its own video a little bit later on in the day. All right, Broncos country, before we dip out of here, if you could just do me a big favor and leave a like on this video as well as subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Two free and easy ways to show your support helps tell YouTube's algorithm to push us out and helps us get seen by more and more members of Broncos country just like you and me. And until next time, guys, I'm your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out.